What would you get if Tim Burton directed a Terminator movie? Well, something not too far off the grisly Necron Flayed one. I'm Pete the Wargamer, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to convert some Necron Flayed ones like the finished miniature that you can see before you now. Their usefulness on the tabletop may be up for debate, but one indisputable limiting factor about these Ed Gein fan club members is their cost to buy. A lowly five flayed ones will set you back £27.50, meaning that fielding them in any useful numbers can be prohibitively expensive. In this guide, I'm going to be attempting to make these guys a little more feasible to field without breaking the bank. So, as you can see here, I have all the components that will build up the core of a conversion, which consists of all the parts required to build a Necron Warrior. Once you have these, we can start building our flayed one. The flayed ones that you want to produce using this guide should be individuals. So, rather than giving a rigid set of steps to follow, I will instead be focusing on a few tips and tricks that you can use to build your own flayed ones in any poses that you see fit. So, let's kick things off by looking at how to create a hood out of flayed skin, which I can safely say is a sentence I've never ever said before. Begin by taking your chain rasp and carefully remove the skull inside the hood using some clippers and a knife. You can then smooth out the inside of the hood using a file. With the hood emptied, you can then carefully clip it away from the rest of the body. Try to follow the line of a fold here as this will create a much smoother and will be less likely to damage the rest of the robes once you've removed it. To add the Necron head to the hood, we need to do a little trimming as the head is quite a bit too large at the moment. Begin by shaving down the sides of the head with a knife or a file. Keep checking the fit against the hood and making small adjustments. Then you will need to cut the rounded top off the head as well. Remember it's better to cut off too little here than too much as you can always go back and remove more if needed. As you can see it's quite a fiddly process but taking your time here will yield much better results. Once you are happy that everything fits together nicely, you can then glue the head into the hood. Now at this stage, the front of the hood will look great, but the back has a gaping hole in it, which will need fixing. For this particular chain rasp, the rear part of the hood is on the other component, so this will need to have its push fit tab removed and shaved down, as well as having the hood removed from the rest of the body. Again, follow the folds as you're making this cut. Once the hood has been removed and cleaned up, Test the fit against the back of the Necron's head. It's likely to not fit straight away, but with the assistance of clippers and a file, you should be able to close up that gaping hole, resulting in a fully formed hooded head. With the head complete, it now needs to be added to the torso, which has been built as per the set's instructions. However, due to the hunched nature of flayed ones, we can't simply glue the head on normally. Instead, we need to position it so the head is slightly further back than usual. The hood can make this a little trickier, so once again, you may need to do a little more trimming. Once you're happy with the fit, you can glue everything into place. Now that we have a flayed skin hood, we need to add in a few more strips of skin. These will be built using the rest of the chain rasp robes. So, to create the strips of skin, begin by removing any non-robe extremities such as arms and chains, but hold on to these items for later use. With the robes cleared, we need to start trimming them down to make more manageable sizes. Again, try to follow the creases and folds in the fabric when you're making your cuts, as this will result in neater and more useful parts. When you have some smaller sections, you can begin to hold these up against your Necron and decide exactly where you want to put them. This will help you to know exactly where you need to make those final trims and adjustments. I found that I often had to file down the insides of the pieces to thin them out to prevent them from protruding too much from the rest of the model. You can also make some V-shaped cuts to create a jagged edge that will create the appearance that the skin is being pulled away from where it has been fastened on. Additionally, adding strips to areas inside of joints and crevices will also help to hide the joints. Once you are happy with how the dry fit looks, you can bring in your glue and make things permanent. With the skin completed, we need to give our flayed one some knives for hands. And the easiest way to do this is to make use of the bladed end of the gauze flayer as well as the left arm. 
All you need to do here is to trim off the blade alongside its mounting point. Clean up the contact point of the wrist and the blade before gluing them together to create an axe head arm. For the right arm, we can make use of our remaining Necron arm as well as some remaining components from our chain rasp. Begin by clipping your arm away from the gorse flare at the wrist. The arm that you're left with has a bend in it, but we can modify the poses of the elbows and the knees quite easily by making a cut just below the elbow or the knee, and try to keep this cut as clean as possible to ensure that you don't damage the forearm as you do it. Once you've decided on the pose to place your arms, you will need to clean up the contact points by filing or trimming them with a knife. You want to create a smooth surface here to ensure that you get a good bond with the glue later on. With the arm prepped, we need a weapon and some extra adornments, both of which can be found by recycling some of the leftover parts from our chain rasp. For a little added chain detailing, we can cut away the manacle from the chain rasp's outstretched arm, carefully keeping the manacle intact while smoothing out either side. The chain rasp sword or axe can then be repurposed into some sort of bladed weapon. You can keep the sword or axe as it is, or just remove them from the rest of the component, or you can just trim them down to create a little weapon variance, much like I'm doing here. Now that all the components have been cut and cleaned, we can start to assemble them with some glue. Start with gluing the two halves of the arm back together in your new pose. Once dried, this can then be added to the torso along with the left arm that we built earlier. Once the arms have been allowed to properly dry, you can add the manacle to the wrist. We've left this particular detail until now so that we can position the chain in a way that physically makes sense for the chosen pose. Finally, the blade can then be added to the other side of the manacle and you're left with your fully armed Necron flayed one. As our Necron currently stands, you could use him as he is. But if you wanted to give him a little added detail, then this can be done with the inclusion of some chain and some skulls. Begin by taking a chain of around 1.5mm links, like this one from Zinge Industries, which is a good scale for 28mm miniatures. You can then place a small amount of superglue to a point at the waist before laying one end of the chain into it. Hold the chain in place for a little while while the glue has a chance to set. After this, start to pull the chain around the body and then back towards the contact point in whatever way you prefer. Once you know the length needed, make a cut in your chain with a pair of clippers before gluing the two ends of the chain together with some more super glue. The chain should be pretty stable at this point, provided you pull the chain tight before you glue it. However, I would strongly recommend adding spots of super glue along the chain's length to make sure it seam remains fixed in place for when you come to paint it. To give our flayed one some grisly trophies, we can look towards the Citadel skull set and pick out a couple of the jawless skulls. Other than having their mold lines cleaned up, all that needs to be done here is to glue these on. You'll just need to use super glue or plastic glue depending on where you attach them, as plastic glue will not hold them against the metal chain. With this step completed, all we need to do then is to add a base and to give our flayed one a paint job. And here we have the fully painted and based Necron Flayed One, constructed entirely from plastic kits, along with a little bit of metal chain. The core of this conversion was built up from regular Necron Warriors, alongside some chain rafts from Age of Sigmar. Warriors are cheap, and if you pick them up in a stock collecting, you're getting yourself 12 of them for about £15. Additionally, chain rafts have flooded eBay after being broken down from start sets, meaning that 10 of these can easily be sourced for about £10. So, our total so far is £25, and we have enough components available to us to build 10 Necron Flayed Ones, with a little assistance for some chain and the Citadel Skull set as well. This way, you now have 10 miniatures for the same price as 5 of the official Flayed One models, plus you should have much more variation across your units. It does take a little more effort to build your Flayed Ones in this way, but you will be able to field much more of them for a much lower price point, so it's really up to you as to whether or not the pros outweigh the cons. So if you enjoyed this non-Imperial, non-Chaos conversion video, then let me know in the comments below and leave me your suggestions for other Xenos conversions you'd like to see me try out in the future. 
If you're looking to recreate this conversion, then check out Firestone Games for up to 15% off the RRP of Wargaming products. And by using my affiliate link in the description below, any products you buy will send a little bit of money my way too, which I can put directly into producing more of these videos. And finally, let me just say a huge thank you to the guys who support me on Patreon. Your continued patronage really helps me with the cost of producing these videos. And if you'd like to support me as well, I've included my Patreon page in the description below, where you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month. So the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching, and goodbye.